five years ago today that Luke Charlie DeRoche disappeared. A son vanishes, sparking a years-long search for answers. Our family has suffered long enough and we're still suffering to this day. It is our certainty that he met with foul play. What happened to him? And it was not random. They knew what they were after. A prestigious gallery looted under cover of night. It was a big deal because things like that didn't happen in Canada. It's not victimless. Everyone has been robbed. It was a very clever theft. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. North Bay, Ontario is often called the gateway to the north, but the small community a few hours from Toronto is notorious for something not as welcoming, the number of people who have disappeared. jean pierre Beauchemin digs into one of the town's most high-profile cases, one that has taken so long to solve that the missing boy's family has launched their own investigation. past it was a beautiful place to live it's not the same place it used to be 10 years ago north bay has become more of a crime area watch the low ceilings here lots of spider webs and dust here heavy drugs are used and there's lots of deaths and there's suicide it's an area that you don't want to be caught up in at night Rob, when you lifted the rock, was a rock lying on that or in front of that? Kind of in front of it. Rob Jolly and Ellen White's journey down to this dark, damp crawl space began as an unlikely partnership. Ellen is a private investigator. Shining the flashlight into that hole. Okay. Rob, a father on a mission. There's some kind of stain right there. I don't know what that is. Sorry we couldn't uh, record a video for you yesterday. They've teamed up to search for clues in the mysterious disappearance of Luke Jolly Duroche, Rob's son, who vanished from North Bay in 2011. We've had several tips that indicated that there might have been some items left behind in the crawl space. They believe this crawl space next to the apartment where Luke stayed with friends could be key to the case. So of interest to us is Luke's distinctive purple belt. We're looking for a bag. Hey, where is this here? Inside this wall is an odd place for a hammer to be. Yeah, I'm gonna get a picture. Luke is from the Kebowak First Nation and grew up near Temiskaming, Quebec, about an hour's drive from North Bay. It's a small town where a pulp mill dominates the landscape and where Luke's big dreams were born. He was a kind and gentle soul. He loved music. He loved making people smile. He said, I will be famous, right? I will be famous someday. Happy birthday, Daddy He wanted to be a musician, songwriter. Luke's mother, Monique, and older sister, Priscilla, love sharing stories of him as a boy. My God, like maybe a year old, two years old. I always say, what do you want for Christmas? And he would say, guitar. I want a guitar. Yeah, That's he's would... probably like three. Yeah. Anyway, end up having a wooden guitar. He'd ask me to be his manager. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Luke Jolly. This song I'm going to play right now was written about a dream I had when I was little. I remember we had a party at my friend's house, and he brought his band over to play, and it was just love to play music. Brent, too, grew up in the same area. He's one of Luke's childhood friends. He's very caring. He's always looking out for you. How often do you think about Luke? <laughs> Every day. Yeah, still. Sorry. Friday, March 4th, 2011. Luke and Brent were in North Bay celebrating a friend's move to the city. So it's just like kind of crappy rundown area and Maybe that's all she could afford or something. I wouldn't say it's the nicest area, that's for sure. It was sketchy? Yeah. And that's the apartment where Luke and Brent planned to stay overnight on Sherbrooke Street, a residential building with four units. Take us back to the night where you last saw him. It's just like kind of like a regular night. Like we're just like horsing around and playing beer pong and stuff like that. And being young. Yeah, being young and 
person living there, she, she took out the uh, jello shots and uh, I guess we had a couple more drinks and um, you start feeling it for sure. And I just like remember like, let's go to the bar and stuff. The group headed downtown and made its way to a bar called Cecil's. Once inside, his friends realized Luke was nowhere to be found. I got in obviously and uh, everybody else got in and I guess Luke didn't get in. The bar's security camera captured these moments. At 11.54 p.m., Luke and his friends go into the bar. But the bouncer turns him away. He leaves, walks on the patio, then down the street and out of frame. Some speculated it was because Luke was too intoxicated, but the investigation has never been able to establish the reason. I just remember getting in and I was just texting Luke like, where are you? And then, like, he no answer. And I just figured that maybe he went to another bar close by. The night of partying continued without Luke. My night's over, and then go back to the apartment. And But Luke like, never came. Luke never, like, yeah, never came in. But it never crossed your mind that something could happen? Mm, not ever in a million years. Then came the first clue something was wrong. Saturday morning, Brent planned to head back to Temiskaming with Luke, but couldn't find him. Yeah, I messaged him like, hey, I'm going on the bus at 12 p.m. He didn't respond to that. So I was texting him through the night, like, where is he? Like, and uh, no answer. His mother texted me and said, have you heard of Luke yet? And I said, no. She says, and neither have I. She says, and I think I'm going to go to the police. And I'm like, well, just hang on there. It's only been a night. That Sunday, Luke was supposed to be at his mom's house to celebrate his youngest sister's birthday. He never showed up, like... He never showed up. And that was strange? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He would have been at his sister's birthday. For him to miss that day, that was not normal. But by Monday, there was still no news. So Luke's mother headed to North Bay to the Sherbrooke Street apartment where he was staying. I was just shaken there and scared and uh, not knowing. As I'm going, I had like a vision. I could see like the house, never seen that before. And I could see my son in the window and he's like that in the window saying, mom, help me, help me, mom. Some of his belongings were still in the apartment. Luke's phone was there on top of a speaker, a hoodie, and uh, it was really damp, like sweaty. And his American Eagle jacket. So we ended up bringing those items with us. And then I went to the police station. I said, my son disappeared. Luke's family reported him missing that Monday. But by then, three days had passed, critical days in a missing persons case. At the time, they felt police wrote off their concerns. Did they think that he was like, out? Oh, he had met a girl? That he was still yeah. partying, that he met a girl that he's staying overnight with, and he just hasn't contacted his family. And we're like, we were, we're not, not impressed. Yeah. Mad? They, they, they didn't take it seriously. They thought it's just a kid running around with a girl in town and he'll show up in a couple of days. I felt insulted. This is the first coverage of Luke's disappearance. The family reached out to the media, hoping to get the word out. About a week after he was last seen, a passerby found Luke's debit card in a snowbank. It was last used the afternoon before he disappeared for a $20 withdrawal. Reports of police canvassing the area also emerged. The police decided that they're going to do a, a ground search of that neighborhood, the Sherbrooke area. They never came up with any results. About six weeks after his disappearance, police conducted a search at the Sherbrooke Street building. Don't wait five, six weeks. Go do it as soon as possible. But it was not the case. It was always delay, delay, delay. Why do you think they delayed, delayed, I delayed? Don't no. Police never disclosed what, if any, clues they uncovered. Months passed with no sign of Luke. Then a break in the case, or so it seemed. Someone claimed Luke had been killed and came forward with specific details about where his body was. I remember thinking, wow, like, for me, it was very surreal. Like, I was like, denial, I guess. Like, I didn't want to believe it. It felt, made me feel, like, really mad. I can't see anybody wanted to hurt him. He's a good kid. Yeah, he's not looking for trouble. Police launched a search in Timiskaming. Marine units scoured Lake Nipissing near North Bay. Nothing. A woman was eventually charged and sentenced to jail time for misleading police. 
Luke's family will never forget. Rob's victim impact statement to the court was heartbreaking. We are scarred for life now. I feel I have been robbed not only of my son, but also of the joys of life. Needless heartache, needless hopes. Exactly. What did that do to you and to the case? Well, it kind of put the case on hold. It was five years ago today that Luke Charlie DeRoche disappeared. In 2016, with the investigation seemingly at a standstill, police put up a $50,000 reward for new information. To this day, that reward remains unclaimed. If Luke was here today, what would you tell him? Uh, I would say, I'm sorry for leaving you that night. I think that's what I uh, have a hard time with a lot, is just uh, feeling that I let him down, you know? And, uh, and his family down. Coming up. I think we're definitely heading in the right direction. Searching for clues and hope. Items were found in this area on that chair. When W5 continues. years. Ten years ago, Luke Jolie de Roche went missing. This weekend marks 11 years since the 20-year-old disappeared in North Bay. I think we're definitely heading in the right direction. Years passed, and North Bay police could not crack the case of Luke Jolie de Roche's disappearance. Luke's father, Rob, continued his relentless search for answers. Here, of course, is Cecil's. Cecil's. The last place Luke was seen. Luke was last seen outside this bar in downtown North Bay. His belongings still at a house where he was staying. It's as though he vanished without a trace. This spot right here, you know, we were told that there was a person there who may speak to us. It seems as though most in this community of roughly 50,000 know Luke's story. Oh, you're looking for... My son. Yeah. Yes, heard of heard Luke? Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. Seen all the posters and everything. Yeah. 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 And just about everyone has a theory. I've heard names, you know, which I, I won't mention, but I've definitely heard names. Rob still couldn't piece together the mystery of his lost son. And so in 2020, he teamed up with Ellen White, a licensed private investigator with more than a decade of experience. This is not just a father. This person has taken on the role of an investigator. He needs some help. And we saw an opportunity to make not only Rob's life better, but to get some answers for the entire family. Ellen and her team began working the file, gathering tips. We have logged, we would certainly be into several hundred hours of visits, of interviews, of communications, of reporting on Luke's case. And soon the team settled on a theory many had long feared. We did roll out very, very quickly that Luke had just taken off to party somewhere, had met somebody and taken off. There is absolutely nothing to indicate that Luke was in any way upset, depressed, suicidal. You feel he met with foul play? It is our certainty that he met with foul play. About 98% of the tips that came into us always identified the same scenario and the same people. Is Luke's disappearance at North Bay's worst kept secret? Certainly to my mind. That secret, she alleges, that many in North Bay know what happened to Luke. We followed Rob and Ellen. Hey there. They're not there? As they went door to door. I'm just going to go have a pee, but that's OK. Looking for anyone willing to pass on valuable information. Well, maybe we can catch up on And them. after a number of failed attempts. Let's cross right here. It's Ellen. How are you? They find someone who they've been hoping to talk to for months. We've changed this person's voice for their safety. It happened in his residence. This is that person's version of events. After Luke left the bar that night in 2011, he got into a violent confrontation near the house where he was staying. When you say it happened, you mean uh, that Luke was beat up or Luke was killed? Luke was killed. Luke was killed yeah. Did they say why? Oh, I Rob and Ellen have heard much of this before, that Luke may have been killed near the Sherbrooke residence. How significant would you say this particular interview was? Uh, very significant. We really believe that this is the correct information. And if she's talking, 
she didn't talk 10 years ago, she didn't talk seven years ago, but she's talking tonight. That information has not been confirmed. And if indeed Luke was killed, a crucial piece of this mystery remains. Where is the physical evidence? Where's his body? We followed Rob and Ellen as they went back to the Sherbrooke Street apartment. The tenants granted them permission to search the premises. Items were found in this area on that chair. They pieced together the layout of the apartment as was described to them in 2011. His American Eagle jacket was here. His keys and his glasses was found in the living room and his cell phone was in the bedroom. And they found the door that leads to a crawl space. So I'm gonna open it. It's a place several tipsters have told them to look for clues and a place to which other units in the building would also have access. We're certainly looking for any evidence of, a, of an assault or a homicide in this space itself. Police conducted their own search here years ago, but could there still be evidence even though 11 years have passed and tenants have come and gone? A couple of our tipsters have mentioned specifically a blanket. Well, apparently they wrapped Luke in a blanket. So they're looking for a blanket, Luke's bag, or purple belt. It's a piece of blue fabric, pale blue fabric. See right here? Some intriguing finds. I, I, this looks to me to be the edge of a blanket. But. I think we probably got a rat's nest. Not what they were looking for. No blanket, no purple belt. And nothing there, right? No, nothing up in the back. Okay. And no bag. But as their search was about to wrap up, a possible lead. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Ellen managed to get a hold of a tipster who claimed to know where Luke's body was taken. There's a ledge underneath the back part. In a deep corner of the crawl space, hidden from plain view, a ledge. The, the significance of the ledge is that that's where Luke's body was placed. Yes. Okay. No sign of body was here, but it's been 11 years, and just knowing the basement matches what some tipsters have described is an important find to Ellen and Rob. They pointed to uh, relevant information that we've now been able to verify. So for us, that's part of the picture of just establishing the credibility of that specific tipster or tipsters. So that part is very beneficial. How many of the tips that you've received have you provided to police? Every single tip. How many of those tips do you believe that investigators have followed up on? With one for sure. In a separate case, a tipster said, I believe I found human remains in North Bay, and police checked that within 48 hours and found the remains were actually animal remains. So she believes police have followed up on very few of those tips. We absolutely do feel that there is enough evidence um, to present to a Crown with the intent of having charges laid. We tracked down an insider who said they've spoken to police multiple times, who claimed to have intimate knowledge of that night. Listen to what they told our producer. How do you think police have handled this investigation? Horribly. They didn't do their job correctly. They didn't investigate correctly. They didn't move on it fast enough. Do you feel that this case should be solved by now? It should have been solved then. They made the mistakes that they kept fixed. Do you get a sense that things might have been different if the police had acted sooner and better? Yeah, it definitely would have been different. Luke's sister, Priscilla. It was always like that feeling that things were always being shrugged off. You know, oh, we took care of that. We looked into it. So tips that you've received, they did not follow up on. Yeah. I've always said good things about the police because I've been telling the public for the last 10 years that we're not going to find Luke without the police. But as time moves on, I don't feel that way anymore. North Bay Police say they've put a substantial amount of resources into this missing persons case. How many hours do you think you personally have dedicated to this case? A thousand. Sergeant Dave Wilson was a detective on the case in the early years of the investigation. Did the North Bay Police take the disappearance of Luke Jolly Duroche seriously from the very beginning? All cases are taken uh, very seriously. Unfortunately, people can't see what's going on behind the scenes. People can't see uh, the searches that are being completed, whether the hospitals that are being checked, whether the ground searches that are, that are, that are being done. Yet more than a decade later, there are still no answers. 11 years is a really long time in an investigation. Do you believe that Luke is alive? Based on the information we have, 11 years, um, you know, the most reasonable assumption is that he's not with us anymore.
What happened to him? Well, I mean, we don't know, right? Short answer is we don't know. Wilson won't speculate on theories that have emerged, but says so much has been said about the case, it's increasingly difficult to parse out fact from rumor. And much of that stems from the false tips in 2011. Unfortunately, that same information has remained with not only within our community, but on social media, online. So we will get multiple tips and multiple sets of information, and it just has different pieces of the lies mixed in. So what you're saying is it's contaminating the stories of other people who come forward then say, oh yes, I saw this, but they've actually just read it online? Absolutely. What about the tips Ellen and her team have sent? Tips she claims are credible and are worth following up on. Do you follow up on every tip that is given to you? Absolutely. Every single tip? Yes. But remember what Ellen White told us. Of the dozens of tips sent, she claims police have followed up on very few. We've got to prioritize. We can't do it all at once. It may take weeks, it may take months to get on top of a tip. Unfortunately, some of the information is so dated, it's information that may have been addressed years prior. But if it's been addressed years prior, years later, those people may be more willing to talk. They may be more willing to have to provide the information. If it's new information or information that leads, leads to follow up, by, by all means, absolutely we go back. What do you think might crack this case? Someone finally coming forward. Someone knows, someone has that key piece of information. We don't want it to be 11 years. We want this solved tomorrow. Our family has suffered long enough and we're still suffering to this day. Luke's loved ones have vowed they will never stop looking. Even if Luke was deceased and not with us anymore, I want him back where he belongs. I want some closure here. Together, we will find Luke. Since our interview with North Bay Police, Luke's family has been told that an additional detective has now been added to the case. If you have any information, you can find out how to report it on our website, w5.ctvnews.ca.